It's Tuesday, February 23rd, and the time for your Bobby Destiny Morning News Update. One of the Caribbean's leading epidemiologists does not believe COVID-19 vaccinations should be mandatory, but has strongly encouraged everyone in the region to be immunized as early as possible. Chairman of PAHO's Regional Immunization Technical Advisory Group, Professor Peter Figueroa, made the comments during a virtual forum hosted by the University of the West Indies COVID-19 Task Force. Several Caribbean countries, including Barbados, have begun the rollout of their vaccination programs with the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. But Professor Figueroa, a former chief medical officer and chief epidemiologist in Jamaica, said people should be allowed to take the vaccine when they are comfortable. No, I don't see the need for mandatory vaccination here at all. Um, it is a new vaccine. We understand that some people are going to be concerned. You know, some people are always willing. They assess the evidence and they're willing to go forward. I'm hoping that the majority of health workers fall into that group. In fact, we had a panel in Jamaica yesterday and we did a quick poll and 84% of the health workers were willing to take the vaccine now. So once the health workers go forward, set the example, we saw the vice chancellor going forward, we saw the principal at Cave Hill going forward, let those who are comfortable going forward first take the vaccine as people here, their friends, people they know, they see them get the vaccine, they see that everything is fine, they will start coming forward as well. I think we will be okay. There's no need to mandate this vaccine, in my view. Professor Figueroa said he would also advise Rastafarians to take the vaccine, but acknowledged that living a healthy lifestyle would help in the fight against the virus. We know that the Rastas prefer to go idle or natural. So this is important. I think the first part of your question was about how you build up your immune system. And I think that if you eat right, you exercise, you avoid excess alcohol or um, drugs, you know, the substance abuse, if you avoid that, then your immune system under normal circumstances is going to be fine. Um, once you're eating right and you're living right. So now the idea of natural, when you eat foods, you get a whole variety of chemicals, proteins, you get vitamins, etc. The vaccine, you could say, is just a synthesized food that helps your body's immunity protect yourself against a specific disease. The COVID-19 monitoring unit is marking the first weekend lockdown as a success, applauding the manner in which the restrictions work in keeping the residents off the road. But head of the unit, Ronald Chapman, is concerned that too many people are still disregarding the COVID-19 public health directives. He also revealed that over a dozen additional people have been charged for breaching protocols and are expected to appear in the law courts soon. Okay, even more cases are going now, but for this week coming. How many more cases will this week coming? Well, I can't give you an exact figure, but Maybe around 14, 15 or more. These were individuals or these were like parties or these were like... Some of them were individuals. Some of them, the, the, the shop owners would have been charged. Some of them were lying. So mm -hmm. there were varieties. What, can, what more can you do? That's a very good question. I think we just need to keep doing what we're doing and appeal to, to, to um, sensible minded Barbadians to follow the, the, the guidelines, to follow the rules um, so we can get up with this. I, I, I'm not sure if I can say much more than that. Yes, there are other strategies probably that we can put in place, but at the end of the day, the law is the law, and we want people to come.
compliance. The Minister of Maritime Affairs and the Blue Economy has urged fisher folk to stay at home while the government seeks to get the fishing industry back up and running tentatively by March 1st. During a virtual meeting on Monday, Minister Cook Humphrey acknowledged the many concerns from workers about loss of sales during this extended period of lockdown. But he said the risk currently to workers contracting or spreading COVID-19 was still too great at this time. He said while markets are not open for vending, his ministry has already begun to make the facilities ready for use as soon as the lockdown of businesses is lifted. The Democratic Labour Party spokesman on Labour on Monday called on Minister Colin Jordan to address pressing issues currently facing workers amid the COVID-19 crisis. In a statement, the DLP's Corey Cox said the Labour Minister's recent plea for workers not to panic was not feasible as several issues preventing the earnest resumption of economic activity still remain with no end in sight. The Democratic Labour Party is at a loss regarding this request of workers. By a minister in an environment where unknown strains of COVID-19 virus are running rampant. This has resulted in business operations being disrupted on a daily basis, with clusters of workers testing positive and staring immediate weeks of financial uncertainty in the face. The government has announced the clearance of testing result backlogs, but we are all aware that numerous workers are still at home awaiting their results for more than a week. We are also aware that the spread has had a tremendous impact on the workers at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, who function daily, fearing that they may contract the virus and take it home to their families. Is the Minister aware that the wait for results at home is not classified as sick leave, and that workers are currently subjected to the whims and fancies of an employer? What is his remedy? There's regional and international news after this short break. From the region, the Guyana Suriname Ferry Service is back up and running after being suspended for almost a year due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Gordon Mosley of News Source Guyana reports. The government of Guyana has made the MB Sandaka available to ply the route as the Kanawaima Ferry remains on the repair. An agreement between the governments of Guyana and Suriname will see the service being operated three times per week. Speaking during a ceremony to restart operations on Sunday, the Public Works Minister Juan Edgel urged citizens to use the ferry as it remains a legal and safe route. Your government, in collaboration with the government of Suriname many years ago, initiated this service to ensure that you travel safely and lawfully. And we want to encourage all Guyanese and Surinamese to desist from the practice of the backtrack, which is risky and have been fatal. Because of the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on other neighboring countries, the service will only be available to Guyanese and Surinamese. And the decision between myself and my colleague in a bilateral government, Guyana, government of Suriname, is that we are unable to open up for full international travel, whether it's people coming through Brazil, French Guyana, Venezuela, through Brazil, 
because of this global pandemic. And finally, the United States recorded a grim milestone on Monday when it surpassed 500,000 deaths due to the COVID-19 pandemic. In this CBS News report, we hear more about how the country marked the heartbreaking day last evening. A somber day marked by silence. Tonight, President Biden and Vice President Harris are paying tribute to the 500,000 American lives taken by the pandemic. The people we lost were extraordinary. It's our fellow Americans, it's our neighbors, our friends, our mothers, our fathers, our sons, our daughters. As if nearly every single resident in the city of Atlanta suddenly vanished. Tonight, the bells tolled at Washington's National Cathedral as they did when 200,000 died, then 300, 400, and now half a million. The toll felt early on by Newark physician, Dr. Chris Purnell. It's like the epicenter of the, of the pandemic landed on me personally. She lost her father, a scientist, as COVID overwhelmed New York. Since then, she volunteered for the Moderna trial. I did a screen in my office and I said, Daddy, I've become a data point. And that was the best way I could pay his legacy for it. Tonight, the CDC is reporting at least 44 million Americans have received at least one vaccine dose. Nearly 20 million are now fully vaccinated. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.bobbylistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.